Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Lean and mean. It's a popular expression throughout the business world and pretty much says what it means. An organization facing troubled financial times looks for ways to save money by trimming costs and then comes back as a more aggressive outfit ready to tangle in the marketplace. We see part of this phenomenon going on in the church these days, at least the lean part. The Archdiocese of Detroit, for example, is prepared to make 60 parishes and worship sites go away, simply vanish by mergers, closings, and clusterings. A reduction of 60, which represents a very hefty percentage. And this on top of a former round of closings a number of years back, which cut a few dozen more from the rolls. In Philadelphia, the same buzzsaw is about to befall Catholics there, as the new Archbishop announced in a very straightforward letter read to all parishioners this past weekend at all the Sunday Masses. In the Archdiocese of New York, 33 Catholic schools had the hammer brought down on them this academic year, and that will surely result in further parish closings in the not-too-distant future as the pipeline of new young Catholics just dries up. The same thing is going on all over the United States and other Western countries. Massive closings and shutterings. A church in all-out retreat running for its life before it's simply overwhelmed. These draconian steps can be seen as necessary in a certain sense because there simply aren't enough Catholics to support what used to be a large physical plant in diocese after diocese. So while arguments can and likely should be made over which particular parishes are shut down or disappear, that the current situation is financially unsustainable really cannot be argued. There are, to put it bluntly, not enough faithful Catholics anymore to support this structure any longer. Something's got to go. Add to all of these woes the more than two billion, billion dollars that have been paid out to victims of homosexual clergy sex abuse, and you have a financial meltdown going on. So yes, the money of the church has to be managed according to the realities that the church is in. So much for the lean part. Now on to the mean part. When businesses cut fat and trim back and reorganize, they do it with an eye to coming back loaded for bear, ready to knock their competition out of the box. If they don't, all the downsizing does is put off the inevitable future bankruptcies and liquidations and the going out of business signs start popping up. Perhaps the most strategic move when a business or company reorganizes is that gut check moment. You check down real deep and look inside to see what really needs to be done internally to make sure that if, if you get to compete again, the internal problems that caused the meltdown in the first place do not reoccur. And this is where, for many, many Catholics, a lot of red flags are going off in diocese after diocese. Sure, many bishops, especially the ones most recently appointed in the last few years, have inherited much of their unfortunate realities from previous administrations. And so they have the sad task of having to clean up. But, and this is a big but, if they do not put in place safeguards to stop the exodus of Catholics from the pews and find a way to halt the shrinking, then this same thing is going to happen again in another few years. In business, you do two things when it comes to your product. You keep the customers you have, and you increase your customer base. Since the one holy Catholic apostolic church has the Holy Spirit as its guide, the blueprint of what to do already exists, and it's very simple. Preach the truth, and then God himself will provide the no-holds-barred whole truth and be very clear about it. The church is in a battle to, de to the death for souls with Satan. Satan has launched a two-front war against the bride of Christ, being the serpent with angelic intelligence that he is. He has combined an external frontal assault against the very truth with a very clever internal assault. And it is the internal assault that is exactly what many Catholics who are faithful are afraid of. While diocese after diocese is downsizing and agonizing over the lack of funds, in many cases, the root cause of the financial meltdown is not being addressed. The truth is not being preached. Catholics are not being properly instructed. And so the Catholic identity is being obscured and wiped out, replaced by everything from a Protestant worldview to an indifferentism among Catholics that in the end 
simply disconnects them from the faith. So they leave. They don't raise their children in the faith. There are less and less Catholics in the pews contributing money, and parishes fail and get closed up, and the whole cycle begins again. In fact, it's been going on now for over 20 years. But now it's really picking up steam and momentum as evidenced by the collapse of the faith in dioceses after dioceses that were former bastions of the faith, all with cardinals once running them. Detroit, New York, Philadelphia, just some of the homes of the vanishing church. The chickens of liberalism and modernism that have run wild for too long in parishes are finally coming home to roost. It is these evils which have caused this fall, and it is there that the forces must be heavily concentrated and do combat. Liberal or ignorant principals and religion teachers in Catholic schools must be shown the door. Liberal or ignorant religious ed directors must get handed their pink slips. Liberal or ignorant liturgy leaders must be given an escort out of the sanctuary. To use the business metaphor, when a management team presides over as colossal a failure as has happened to the Catholic Church in the West, that management team must be fired. End of story. In the past 40 plus years, the functioning church has been reduced by well over 50 percent and is as plainly evident from the objective financial numbers, the pace is quickening. Near collapse is a portend of future total collapse unless bold steps are taken immediately. What the current leadership has inherited is not its fault. What happens from here on out and in the future will be. The church's real problem is not a lack of money. It's a glaring lack of the faith and knowledge, the faith and knowledge which leads to holiness and a rightly lived moral life where contraception is rejected, marriage is held in the esteem that our blessed Lord holds it in, the sacraments are revered and participated in for the rivers and torrents of grace which they are. Without these truths being proclaimed boldly, we might as well establish a permanent department of parish closings in our chanceries until there are no more parishes left to close down. Last person out of the parish, be sure and blow out the candles. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. How about getting real this Christmas? Do you know where you're going? A RealCatholicTV.com subscription is the perfect gift. It's also your home for hundreds of hours of programming as a premium member. And we have dozens of programs on DVD that make great Christmas gifts for your family, friends, and yourself. So this Christmas, come home to the Catholic Church and make RealCatholicTV.com your homepage. Merry Christmas from Real Catholic TV.